All right, I am going to get set up. I see a couple of thumbs up. How's everybody doing? This is our first official, like, good, clean uh, live cast here. So give me a second, just kind of get situated. That's not what I was trying to do. Um, if you're new to the channel, we do a little bit of everything. Uh, mostly guitar lessons and backing tracks. Uh, this is actually going to... Hey, Bruce! Um, let me see. I'm using all new software right now. Oh, awesome. Okay, I'm using all new software, which means that there's a little bit of uh, adjustment here. Hey, Mr. Tankersley. Looks like we got a few people watching here. Um, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to talk about... Hey, Gary. <laughs> um, I just got done teaching all of my big band and... Uh, uh, jazz conservatory classes today and, and a private lesson so I'm like like running to like catch my breath here and drinking coffee and so alright so here's the deal we're gonna talk a little bit about different kinds of harmony and chord progressions songwriting in and of itself is not something that really should be broken down into rules and laws um, also audio is good for you guys you can hear everything good hey it's Charles Charles is a great songwriter, so is Gary, um, by the way. I'll give them plugs for their albums here. <laughs> um, Charles, uh, Gary is a, 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 a kind of a solo artist, and, and Charles plays in a really cool band called The Bird Index, so look them up. Um, I like to take elements of music and break it up into stuff that's comfortable for us to use. Uh, you want to organize the music so that you have access to it when you're trying to be creative. You don't want to be making music just by the rules because the rules are kind of useless in that regard. So the first thing that I, I want to do, uh, actually, you can hear the guitar. Um, you can see the guitar if we need the guitar here. Um, and then we've got our workspace here, and this is going to be kind of the first thing we're going to we're going to talk about. So my my thought process with this is that instead of dealing with just um, like how do you write a song, I want to talk about the, the how chords work and how harmony works in songs. And the easiest way to get started with this is understanding how just your basic major scales harmonize. And we're really just going to be working with C major today. And the idea with this is that within C major, we also have the ability, uh, where are my overlays here, um, to do all kinds of cool stuff, not only with the chords that are in the scale, which can get kind of boring because they're purely diatonic, but we can also borrow chords from other modes and scales, or we can alter them. There's two different ways we're going to do that, but we're going to start with the, the easy way first. All right, so let's, if we take a look on the right side of the screen here, uh, C major. We're using C major because it is literally just the natural notes. Uh, C, D, E, F, G, A, and B. Uh, if you don't know your major scales, uh, I've got lessons. For, I'll post all kinds of helpful stuff after this, but we're starting with this. You're going to have to take it for granted because I don't want to spend uh, the whole hour doing like first semester freshman music theory. <laughs> I want to get you guys to the fun stuff here. Um, in the key of... Um, of C major, uh, if we were build chords, if you look where it says the harmonized major scale, um, we've got chords that are, are basically the notes in the scale that are stacked every other note, or what we call stacked thirds. So if you take the first, third, and fifth notes of C major, you get C, E, and G, which is this first little stacked bit right here. Um, actually, you can't see my pointer in this, can you? Uh, that's a major chord. The other major chords in a major key are going to be the four and the five chords. They're uppercase Roman numerals. That'll also help you out. The two, three, and six chords are going to be minor chords. And these are just how these chords naturally occur uh, within what we call a diatonic or a seven note major scale. When we just talk about, hey, we're in C major, this is what we're talking about. The seventh chord is a diminished triad. We don't really use it all that much, but you're going to see later on there's going to be some cool uses for when we add the fourth note to that chord and it becomes a half diminished chord. 
Um, when I refer to scale degrees, that's the number of the note within the scale relative to the root. So if we're in the key of C, uh, C is the one, it'll be the one chord. Uh, if I say, uh, let's do the four chord, we're referring to F. That's the fourth chord relative to C. If we were in another key, like if you look down at the bottom on the right hand side here, I've got this kind of uh, 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 table here with all these different keys. If I go down to A, uh, the four chord is gonna be D and the five chord is gonna be E. I've provided that stuff on the right because it just makes it easy for you to, to get a handle on this stuff quicker. Um, it's kind of best to learn how to do all your music theory the way we traditionally do it, but I don't really, um, I don't really want to get too buried in it, to be honest with you. All right, Is anybody lost at this point? This is a good place to kind of get you guys uh, not lost. All right, so on the left, let's do this. Let's, um, hopefully all my technology is going to work. All right, so say I do a chord progression in the key of C. All right, and we're just gonna say, hey, I'm gonna use the one chord, uh, the five chord, the six chord, and the four chord. All right, so in this key, right, that gives us C major, G major, A minor, and F major. All right, so if I was to play this, Hopefully this guitar is still in tune here. All right, just to give you a sense of how I'm doing this, and this could be on any instrument. C, G, A minor, F. And this is like that chord progression that like eight zillion songs are on. There's a video of these guys where they do like four minutes of like the chorus of like every song with this chord progression. Um, you've heard it a million times, but let's do something more interesting with that. Let's, let's kind of come back to our, our materials, because the thing is, is that if we, uh, where's my overlays here? If we want to, we can actually change this stuff up quite a bit. Now there's there's two levels of this. There's the easy way and there's what I, I'm kind of jokingly calling the music scientist way. The easy way is, is how I generally teach people. And right, we're gonna start with that even though it's on the bottom. So the first thing you can do is you can make your major chords minor. And now, I was telling a student earlier today, this stuff is like putting spices in, in a dish. Like certain things are great in small amounts. Like I'll, I make barbacoa in the crock pot, which is, uh, um, it's like beef, shredded beef for tacos. And one of the ingredients is um, it's ground cloves. And if you've ever cooked with ground cloves, you know it's very overwhelming very quickly. I think it's like a quarter or a half a, a teaspoon you put in this and then your whole house smells like cloves, it's amazing. So you use a little bit of it, it helps the whole dish. If you use too much or you just start licking the teaspoonful of cloves, it's disgusting. Keep that in mind when we're doing these chords. You don't really want to be doing too much of this stuff all at once. So the first thing I'm going to do is let's let's experiment. Let's let's change the uh, the five chord to a minor, right? So this is the first thing here: make major chords minor. So let's go one, and then lowercase five. So we're going to put a, a G minor right here. Let me play this. So I got C major, G minor, A minor. F. Just those two chords by themselves sound really cool. It's different instead of... All right, we're just taking something that we're used to and, and giving it a twist. All right, now I'm not really in love with G minor to A minor in this context. All right, so one of the things that you can do, we can go over to uh, the third... <laughs> Thank you, Charles. Uh, uh, lower the third, the minor chords a half step and change them to major chords, right? So the sixth chord is minor normally. We're going to lower it a half step and make it major. So we're going to go 
flat six. Major, the upper uppercase Roman numeral says it's major. So we're going G minor to A flat major. One more time, G minor, A flat. Oops, actually, you guys aren't seeing my, my uh, the wrong overlay here. Um, there you go. Do you see that? So I got the C, G minor, A flat major, F major. That works pretty cool. So let's uh, let's try something different. Let's take the other major chord in this chord progression, the F, and we're going to make it minor. So we're going to go C, G, A minor. We're going to keep all those normal. And then we're going to make the four chord minor. I'll just do this down here. It's going to be F minor. All right, this one actually, G, I'm sorry, C to G, A minor. All right, now that's one of my, my favorite chords, and that's one of the first chords, uh, non-diatonic chords that most people get. Usually you steal it from a, a Beatles song, like, uh, you know, in my life, I've loved you more. All right, um, you hear that a lot in Beatles tunes, you hear that in a lot of pop tunes. Uh, it's just a, it's a really great sound and what you're gonna find is that the more you experiment with this stuff The more you're gonna start recognizing these out of songs that you're familiar with when I changed the five chord to minor There's a Duran Duran song. I, I grew up with and I don't remember what it was and I think it's on the on the Rio album and, and that that sound is just really evocative of that to me and, and that's the thing is that What you're finding as you do this is that you're, you're collecting sounds and if you can relate them to things you're already familiar with that you hear in your head it becomes easier it becomes a device it's like hey I want to do that Beatles thing all right and it doesn't necessarily have to mean it sounds like the Beatles but you've got a way of connecting to that chord or that sound that makes sense to you because at the end of the day music theory this stuff these are not laws you're not gonna get you know a ticket from the government for using the wrong chord in a chord progression uh, but they're guidelines. They're, they're ways to organize and understand how notes relate to each other and chords relate to each other and rhythms relate to each other. But, you know, when I was in college, in music school, they, they really explained to me that, you know, even if you took all of our rules of Baroque counterpoint, and we talk about Bach music, inventions and fugues and stuff like that, you know, all the stuff that they would grade us off on, like you can't do parallel fits, or they'll, they'll name a bunch of stuff, You'll find examples of that in box music because at the end of the day, music is supposed to be what you're inspired to create. Right? The rules are just to help you get there faster. And that's what music theory is. So for me, when I was a younger player and when I was first writing music for like the rock bands I was in, I was always trying to say, hey, <clears throat> I'm supposed to be in this, this key. So these are the chords I'm allowed to use. And it wasn't until I started realizing that the, the songs that I liked had these other chords and I started kind of pulling those songs apart and analyzing what those chords were relative to all the other chords that it really made sense to me that, you know, none of this stuff is set in stone. It's really what you want to get out of it. Uh, to me, all of this stuff, these things that I teach for the songwriting, the things that I teach for um, improvisation on guitar, they're all just basically organizations of these ideas that will help you. It's almost like you're building a palette and each one of these things is just one way to get from point A to point B or to get a color. All right, anybody have any questions at this point? I, I'm, I'm talking a lot, I'm talking really fast. So this is a good, uh, another good point to check in. <clears throat> yes, no? Are we good? Okay. In that case, let's soldier on. Uh, one of the things I like to do and we're going to come back to this in a second. This is the, the basic idea um, from all of this. Whoops. I got too many of these things going on. I'm using new software, like I said, so it's all, it's all a mess. Um, the easy way, you could sit down and you could take any chord progression and just start messing with stuff like that, and it's going to get you new sounds. Music scientist way we're going to come back to in a second. But I kind of want to go back to this this idea of the, the Beatles, all right? Because it's a great way to see how somebody uh, can take 
Uh, let's get rid of this. And oops, where's my iPad on here? There we go. Okay, so you can see uh, I've got the music for uh, In My Life up. You guys can all see that. All right, so what I'm going to do is let's let's analyze this. I know that this is in the key of A. And to me, this is one of my favorite songs to do this with because it's a great mix of what we call diatonic or traditional harmony and then these, these really colorful things, right? So we're in the key of A. We're starting on A. That's the one chord. If you were to go back to our, our matrix here, um, not that one, that one, right? If you look at the key of A, which is the fourth line down, our chords A, B minor is the two chord, C sharp minor is the three, D major is the four, E major is the five, F sharp minor is the six, then we've got uh, G sharp diminished, which looks like I just wrote G diminished, I can't even see. Anyway, so let's get rid of that for a second, but if you're needing to uh, scorecard to keep track of where we are in this stuff, that's the important stuff. All right, so we're starting on A. I know that uh, A, actually, so wait, no, there's not a way of doing that, okay. So that's the one chord, we've got the five chord, it's an E7 chord, that's a dominant chord, and in a major key, the dominant chord only happens on the five chord with the seven. And what it's there to do is to resolve back to the one. We're gonna talk about that in a, in a few minutes um, when we talk about the secondary dominance, but A. Ba -da -ba -da -da -da. There are pl places I read. Oh, actually it does the intro again. So one to five. And I'm gonna put that five seven there just cause it's part of the sound. All right, so the verse, one chord, and then we've got six, that's the F sharp minor. Now we've got A7, right? A is the one chord, but it's a dominant seventh chord. Remember, I was just saying that the dominant seven is only the five chord. Well, in this case, we're kind of changing keys just for a second. This is called the secondary dominant, so it's one seven. The other name for this, and we're gonna give it a different color here, is that this is the five seven chord of four in this key, okay? Uh, and then we're back to here's your four chord. That's the D. All right, so that's what we call a secondary dominant. It's a dominant chord that goes, it resolves to any other chord in the key. And that's the cool thing there. So we got the play, um, the places I remember. All right, you got that A7. In my life. Though some have changed. Right, so we go the four chord and then the minor four chord. And then back to the one. All right, so without my horrible singing here. A major, F sharp minor, A7. That note right there is the, that's what makes it dominant. That's out of the key. And then we've got D major, D minor. So that's, that's where we take the, the four chord and make the major chord minor, and then back to the A. All right, and that goes, again, that continues on. So we've still got the one chord, we've got six, um, we've got, we're just gonna leave it at one seven. Uh, that goes to the four chord, the minor four chord, and then back to one. So that's the verse. And if you see here, there are mostly chords in the key of A. There's just a couple of interesting things here. Uh, and like the secondary dominant chord here, right? That is really just there to drive us towards the four chord, right? It just makes it more interesting going there. And we're gonna do another example of that later on. When we go down to the bridge at the bottom of the page here, right, the bridge starts on the F sharp minor chord which is, if I had a classroom full of people in front of me, I'd ask somebody what this is, but in reality, it's the sixth chord. And then we're at the four chord. And then G, or G major. So we don't have G major in the key of A major. All right, I'm gonna bring this up just a little bit so you see what's, where it's going to. All right, in this context, 
this is if you go back to the easy let's bring our, our harmony matrix back here uh, lower any minor chords a half step and change them to major chords well in reality we're using the the seven chord is normally diminished we're, we're giving that treatment to that as well uh, so that's what that G is so that that's gonna be a flat flat seven that's also a major chord and then back to the one chord so let me play that part there's that flat seven chord back to the A um, these places had their moments with lovers and friends I still can recall and that's going to continue on six chord and then B7 so we're in the key of A major B7 and here's where my rules go down the toilet again all right so this is going to be a two dominant chord all right which is not diatonic and then we're going to go to the four minor and then back to the one so let's hear how that part sounds some are dead and some are living in my life i've loved them all so back from the beginning of the bridge chords without the horrible singing That's the analysis of, of that part of, of the bridge you know there's a bulk of this that is diatonic there's actually probably at least half of this that's that's not but we can kind of justify it we can kind of figure out what those are in the next part of this when we go back to our, our matrix and we start talking about borrowing chords from other modes this will be a little bit more explainable so then we get to the interlude the interlude is uh, it's the harpsichord solo in this one five six one seven which is the five of four so we're going to the four chord minor four hopefully you guys can read my writing and then one all right first second ending all right the very end is the part that's like the most striking in my life i've loved you more all right one Dominant five chord, minor four chord. That's the sweet one. One, five and one. All right. That five dominant five chord to the one chord. We call that a full cadence. That's basically the function of a dominant chord was originally to create tension that would resolve back to the one chord. And so much of our chord progressions are about basically steering people's expectations around by creating tension and, and releasing it. Same thing with melodies, same thing with rhythmic ideas. Okay, before I move on from here, let's take a little break and see if you guys have any, any questions so far. Oops. Cool, I'm glad you dig it. The nice thing is I'm gonna leave this up so this will be available to you and uh, there's the PDF uh, do you guys all have see where the PDF is underneath the, the live stream uh, basically in the in the video description uh, I won't post the Beatles tune because that's a copyright issue I'm trying to stay on the right side of the law um, but you can always kind of do this sort of analysis thing you on your own so, okay, so everybody's good. No questions so far. Excellent. All right, so let's kind of go back. Oops. At some point I'll know where all the buttons on this thing are. Um, let's get rid of the iPad. This is really cool software I'm, I'm using, but it... Um, kind of messes with me a little bit. Oops, what happened to my split screen here? Nope. 
Actually, let's just do this. We're going to take this one here. All right. So one of the things that I had to take in, in music school, and then those of you guys who don't know me, I, I, uh, I had a, a college, music degree and I never got a chance to finish my, my bachelor's degree. I got an associate's degree. And then later on in life, like in the last couple of years, I had to go back to music school and, and I got my degree in jazz guitar. One of the, the pre, uh, requirements was I take a jazz, uh, one of the requirements was that I take a class in jazz harmony. And, you know, I, I had to compose some, some jazz music. I had to take big band arrangement, all that stuff. But a lot of what I learned actually shed a little bit of light on how more sophisticated pop music was written. So there's this idea of, of borrowed chords where it, the top line of this thing, uh, where it says the matrix C major, uh, the top scale C Ionian, that's just your major scale. That's just your regular major scale that we were just working with. And we've got the chords that exist in there, but we can build any of the modes from the major scale. You can do this with any scale really, but we're just doing the, the diatonic modes, the modes that come out of a major scale. And if you don't understand what modes are, don't worry about it. For right now, they're just scales. That, and these are all related to C, right? These are all parallel, which means that they're all started on the same root. So it's C Ionian, C Dorian, which is normally the second mode, C Phrygian, C Lydian, C Mixolydian, C Aeolian, C Locrian. And I built another one of these little matrices here, or tables, where you can kind of see that the one chord in each of these you know, in Ionian, it's major. In Lydian, it's major. In Mixolydian, if we're just doing the triad or the regular three-note chord, it's major. But I put the, the fact that it's a dominant seven chord in here. And also anywhere uh, the the five chord as it relates to C happens uh, because it, it's kind of important. We'll, we'll talk about that in a second. All right. Um, at the top, instead of Roman numerals, we just have regular uh, number numbers. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, and we're using the Roman numerals in the table the way we talked about before. Uppercase are major chords, lowercase are minor. If you got like the seven with the little circle, that means diminished, fully diminished. Um, and what we can do is we can take a chord progression like um, if I go back to playing C, G, A minor to F, right? So that's one five, six, which is minor, and then four, I can borrow a chord out of any of the other modes in this matrix here, right? So I can go one, and then uh, when I did the minor five chord on the easy way, when I just made the major chords minor, if, if you go to the five column and look down, uh, the second mode, Dorian, that's got a minor chord. The third mode, Phrygian, that's got actually a diminished chord, but Mixolydian and Aeolian all have minor five chords too. So I'm actually borrowing this chord out of that, out of that key. Or it could be construed that way, right? I wouldn't get too precious about where these come from, but it's kind of neat to look at this and figure out, hey, you know what? If I'm, if I'm playing C major, G major. Let's see what happens if I take the the sixth chord instead of playing my A minor. I take the sixth chord out of Phrygian, which happens to be A flat major. So one five A flat major, and then my four chord. I, I might have done this earlier in the hour. This this chord progression, but this is another way to look at it. In the easy way, I just took the minor chord, the sixth chord, and I lowered it a half step, and I made it major. And in the easy way, that's like rule number three down there. Uh, in the music scientist way, we're going to call it, uh, that's me stealing that chord out of, it could be out of um, Phrygian or it could be out of Aeolian. Right. Um, if I want to, I really like this thing. I was doing this with a student earlier. One, five, so C to G. I've got that A flat major. And then if I'm in the Aeolian mode and I go to the four chord, it's an F minor back to the C. So let me play that without talking over it. That's a pretty strong chord progression. It's, it's, it's really evocative, right? So if I played it vanilla, we'll call the major scale vanilla. And then here's 
my borrowed chords. Alright, so let's do this. Uh, somebody give me a couple, two borrow chords to work with. So we're going to replace, we're going to keep the C major, but you can, you guys can steal a chord out of any mode for the five, six, or four chords, but we're only going to do two of the three. So go ahead and, and put them in the, in the comment box there. This is the fun part of live streaming is you never know like how long the lag is <laughs> between you, YouTube, and uh, where everybody else is at. Okay, so my game show idea, let's see. So A flat on the six, A flat seven. Okay, which is coming out of the Locrian mode. And then E flat seven. Okay, so let me do A flat seven and G minor just to start with. Um, oh wait, one, C, G, a flat seven. Ah, G minor. Sorry. <laughs> C, G minor. A flat seven. F. Without me talking. So let's do uh, E flat seven. <clears throat> um, so are we going to replace the? What chord are we going to do E flat seven in, David? Um, so go D, G minor. So let's do E flat seven in place of the sixth chord. So we'll do like a the flat three dominant chord. So that's kind of cool. I like that. We just got rid of the sixth altogether. All right. Um, I think you know that's if you understand this this is kind of kind of cool the trick though is that you know you have to be able to turn it in other keys I've got this written out um, you know learning the rest of your theory helps with this three chord what do you mean by three chord David oh on the on the third chord that was the E flat okay um, let me do one thing actually. I did um, I did this earlier. I went one five, and then for the sixth chord, I stole out of the door. And do you guys hear my dogs? All the dogs are barking, so I think the mailman's gonna come and you're gonna hear it over the YouTube. <laughs> All right, so C, G, and then the sixth chord out of Dorian. That's the half diminished, and then the F. Seemed cooler earlier. Um, I like the the flat seven idea too. You know, if you think about like um, C, what I just did there is I went one flat three major. Flat six major, five, and back into the one. And some of this is that if you just drop a chord in into an existing chord progression, it may not work if you're actually just doing it with the harmonic rhythm of whatever the song is. Sometimes a chord needs to sit for a little while, uh, and sometimes uh, it'll it'll work okay. <laughs> Jeremy, a little late for mail. Our mailman came at 9:37 last night. Scared the heck out of us. Our mail service is all kinds of screwed up. So we get that. We also get everything delivered at the house. So like, it's nonstop. I had a, a screen door delivered today and the dogs went bonkers. All right. Anyway, so the dogs hopefully will chill out here in a few minutes. Um, but you can, I would love, I would love to hear people write ideas with this and, and share them. And I don't, I don't, it just kind of occurred to me that that would be kind of the coolest thing. So, 
maybe maybe I'll put a link in the video description probably on our guitar forum I think it would be the, the easiest way to do it <laughs> thanks Howie um, all right so I'll put I'll put a link in the video description for a place on our forum if you guys want to uh, share and, and be critiqued or, 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 or collaborate on stuff because I think it'd be kind of fun to see what you guys do with this material um, one other thing I was, I was kind of thinking about is that a lot of times it's difficult to write complete songs because it's difficult for sections to, to change. You know, I was talking earlier to a student and um, he was having difficulty with, this, uh, with the idea that, you know, hey, I'm in the key of C, so every section starts on C. And it's like, well, no, not really. You know, one of the things that you can do is you can look at it like... Um, Hey, our, if we're in the key of C, uh, our, we'll do our verse. Maybe we'll just go one to four. And then maybe for the chorus, we'll start on the five chord. All right, that's a good way to set it. So, so starting other sections of the tune on different chords in the key helps. The four and the five chords are good because they're strong, but also the six chord works too. The six chords are good for bridges. So I'm at the end of my chorus, and maybe we'll go six chords. That's the A minor. Flat six chord major. Five chord, and then back to the C. Um, you know, these are templates. Sometimes I throw things together like when I do backing tracks this way. Um, if I'm working on a song, it's easy to fall back on these things. Uh, once again, they're not rules. They're not laws. Um, don't fall into the habit of writing songs with formulas like this because then everything sounds like contemporary uh, uh, Nashville country music. <laughs> so um, so that, that's one thing. The other thing is like, you know, you can have a song with one chord progression all the way through and all the stuff that we've talked about it kind of becomes irrelevant because you know at the core of it um, you know one of the things that we can do is um, there's a song I hated when I was like 16 when Joshua Tree came out all right but with or without you by you too is a great example if you listen to it because it's basically it starts with this bass line and the chord progression is one five six four kind of like what we we're doing earlier and that never changes but what does change is there are a couple things one of them is the arrangement they add elements every like eight or sixteen bars rhythmically or keyboards or different guitar parts but the biggest thing are the vocal melodies um, I don't know the words but you got that you know through your eyes I see the storm I don't know the words I want more so you got this kind of like low-key strong melody with or without you. So that's kind of the big refrain. With or without you. But later on in the song, it's still the same thing going on, but you got this, you know. Right? And the only thing that changes is, well, a lot changes. The chord progression never changes, right? So you can look at this a couple different ways. And one of them is just the idea that you can do a lot with chords. And the other thing is that you can do a lot with all the other elements in, in music. You know, I've, I've kind of gotten to this point where um, I had a teacher a couple years ago explain to me. He's like, you can really look at every parameter in music. And we're talking about jazz improvisation, but I think it's true for everything. Everything basically has like a gas pedal. You know, how much tension do you want to create? Uh, how much color do you want to use like how you know and, and you can step on the gas a little bit and get moving forward or you can just crank it you know and it just depends on how much of any of these elements you really want to rely on the problem is you can't rely on all of them all of the time you gotta you gotta figure out like what's important 
And then what can you do that stays simple? And the more things that you keep simple, the more striking the interesting or the unique or the outside ideas or elements are. Okay. So let me do this. Let's uh, let's open it up for questions because I've been sitting here talking for about 40 minutes. I've covered a lot of stuff, actually. Um, so and also let me check on the on the YouTube. The live streaming thing is it's kind of it's kind of different these days. All right, so I don't have any com oh oh there it's that's where it is. Interesting. Okay. No questions? I always talk about guitars a little bit too. <laughs> so, I don't know. For me, the songwriting stuff is... Uh, I went through a phase where I just wrote everything in a book. And everything was a lyric. You know, and I would start there and then I would have piles of... of chord progressions or ideas and eventually I would marry one element to the other uh, now it's I don't know I, I'll find a little melodic fragment I really like or maybe there's a chord progression or a groove uh, songs come in a lot of different forms for me now so Jeremy um, are you guys seeing the comments when they pop up on the screen I, I like this I wonder if there we go. Okay. So even staying in key and borrowing chords, can you give an example of a solid no in exchanging chords? Like the idea of uh, something that just does not work. Is that what you're asking? Um, it's a good question. Um, you know, if you go... G minor, F minor to C major. I just don't like that. And that's, I think, what a lot of it comes down to is does it serve your purposes? You know, does it, do your ears like it? You know, at the at the end of the day, that's really what it's all about. You know, if, if I was to say, no, you can't do that, you know, maybe I don't know something that you know creatively. I don't want to, I want to get, I don't want to give a solid no with this stuff. Um, the best thing with, with this stuff is if you come up with something really weird or bizarre, you know, like you're, you're writing in the middle of the night and you, you're selling everything's creative and you're, you, you know, record it and then listen to it the next day. And if it still sounds awesome, then cool. But if it sounds like um, you were on drugs the night before, then maybe you should try something else. That, that's kind of how I would look at it. Okay, so David... So C, A minor, F, G is C major... Well, actually, all of those chords are just in the key of C major. There's no borrowed chords in there. It wasn't until I was using like the A flat major or made the G minor or the F minor, anything like that. Those are all the borrowed chords. All right. What you have there, C, A minor, F, and G are all diatonic. They all belong in the key of C major. Does that make sense? Okay. I'm liking I'm liking this now. I'm I'm kind of getting the hang of uh, of this stuff. If I back up, was there anything? Uh... I guess that's it. Cool. Um. Oh, here we go. So Bruce. Okay. So occasionally I'll. Th I'll think up a melody and then try and fit chords to it. There'll be one note that I can't fit and end up changing the melody as opposed to finding the chord that would make it work. Okay, so then this is great. This is another great reason for these borrowed chords. You know, um, um, say I've, uh, I got this idea I really like. I'm in the key of C and I'm doing our, our one, five, six, four chord progression. Um, and I want to go so I'm playing C, G, F sharp, and then F. So I can take any chord that has an F sharp in it and substitute it for where that's going to go in the chord progression. So C. Da, 
So I put a, a, a dominant two chord there. So I went um, C, G, D7, and then F, F major. Da, 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 da. I sing it's horrible, right? So these borrowed chords are really cool in terms of um, if you've got a melody that you like and you need it, you need it to work. You know, the melody is more important than the chord progression, which is really the case. I, I think, you know, we're working on chord progressions because it's kind of an easy first thing for me to talk about. But at the core of it, your melody is really what the song is. Right? That's the important part. So for me, I would just kind of figure out what that note is that doesn't fit anything. And then I would just find, find a chord that fits it. You know, that's, that's kind of the way to look at it. Um, okay. So let me, let me, I'm liking this. All right, where I find this thing most helpful is when I write a cool riff and then try and connect it with another riff. Sometimes getting from one to another involves some backflips. Yeah, I mean, sometimes riffs don't don't work together, but sometimes things that don't seem like they don't work together can if you figure out some way of bridging them. You know, that and that's that's part of it, I think, is, is as you get used to uh, how harmonies flow, you get used to connecting things that seem like they'd probably be a little bit more disjointed. So, um, Gary, yeah. cool. I'm glad. I'll pop Gary's. Um, Charles, I don't know half of my baby. I don't know the chords for it. We could do, uh, it's not un unusual to be loved by some. <laughs> uh, actually, that, that song. Okay, let's, let's talk Tom Jones for a second. You um you made a mistake, my friend. No. <laughs> um, not unusual to be loved by someone. So one, two, five. Not unusual to be. All right. So what you have here is you got this chord progression. Um, one, two, five, one, two, and then it goes up three. Um, I thought there was something weirder about this. Two and then five. So that was a bad example. I was thinking there was something that was actually non-diatonic in that. And as I'm playing it, I realize there is not. I apologize. <laughs> but um, maybe for next time I can, I can learn half of my baby. What's I'm trying to think like what's another good song that has uh, has some weird chords in it? Um, I know a million songs. This is what kills me is I know a zillion songs, but I don't really um, um, think of them like when I'm not actually on a gig. Um, Uh, one one device that I, I think is kind of cool, actually. Um, say we're in the key of A, um, and we want to extend the end of a song, so we can go A, A with an E in the bass, E and then A, right? So you'll probably hear that sort of thing a lot. Um, Uh, Tears in Heaven, he does it a bunch. All right. Um, oh, something. Actually, let me let me get to something in a second. We love the Beatles, right? But this sort of thing, I really like this. So basically, it's the one chord, which is A, and then it's the one chord as an inversion, which is A with the the five in the bass. So it's A over E, right? And what happens is this A chord here. That actually becomes kind of a suspended chord for the E, right? Because the notes are, are E, which is the root of the E. You have A, which is the, the fourth of the E chord. And then you've got this uh, C sharp, which is kind of, the, it's like the sixth. So the whole thing wants to resolve 
that way it creates kind of a little bit of extended tension and then it resolves there all right so that's kind of a kind of a cool device to use sometimes um something by the beatles um this one it, it's funny there's this thing that i learned called uh, chromatic extension of static harmony kesh in the, the same jazz harmony class um and basically what it means is that you've got a chord or chromatic embellishment and you've got a, a note that kind of descends through the chord in this case you got c major and you got c major seven right so i've got this melody note where it's going from c down to the open b string right there and then b flat so once we put the b flat there that makes that a c7 chord And if you guys remember <clears throat> from the uh in my life once you take the one chord and you make it a dominant chord it's actually the five chord of the four a secondary dominant of four so you got that something in the way she moves attracts me like no other lover something in the way she moves me right so then these chords d d7 and g we're in the key of c so d would normally be d minor in the in the in the diatonic key we got d major right so that's a borrowed chord out of you get uh you could say it's out of lydian if you want to d major d7 all right uh which is really lydian all right and then that's also the five chord of g which is so it's the five of five if you're going to do the secondary dominant thing um so let me think for a second c c major seven which is still in the key c dominant seven Right, and that dominant seven becomes the dominant chord of the four chord. And then D major to D seven, that's kind of the dominant chord of the five chord. And then we've got, it goes up to the um, A minor, which in the key of C is the sixth chord. Right, so that's actually one of those chromatic embellishment deals. So you got the A minor with the A in the bass. A minor with a, a G sharp in the bass, which is A minor major seven. Don't worry if you're not getting these chords. It's, it is. Um, we're just kind of talking about it. A minor seven because you got the G in the bass, and then you got the A minor with the, the F sharp in the bass. Um, and that's kind of a cool way. Basically, you're staying on the A minor chord, but you're creating a little bit of movement. All right. It's also similar to you know. Right, that you know, Stairway to Heaven's got a lot of really cool harmonic things that happen this way, um, that were probably stolen from other places too. <laughs> right, but that that's that whole beginning of Stairway to Heaven, those first four notes. That's the same thing as this part of something. Although that's not, I'm sure that's not where Jimmy Page stole that from. I've lost track of where they've stolen all the stuff from Led Zeppelin. But something is cool because uh, there's so much stuff going on and it's really pretty. But if you really pull it apart, so much of it is functional. Right? These movements all function towards driving the song forward. Because a lot of this stuff is really about making, creating, or developing forward movement. We want to go someplace. We don't want to sit on one chord all the time. So, okay. So, Bruce, it's, it's Beatle Fest. All right. B minor seven, E seven, A. Yesterday. B minor. I think I've got that right. It's been a, it's been a while. Um, so we're kind of in, in the key of C. We've got one, five, and four, and six all in the key of C. Um, but we have. The B minor seven, which is interesting, but it's not exactly legal. It's supposed to be a B minor seven flat five if we were really in the key of C. Don't worry about it. I'm sure the Beatles didn't. All right, but that B minor seven is the two chord if E seven is the five chord of A. So we actually have this weird, like it's kind of a, a, a modulation of sorts. We're going leading or driving you into the six chord in, in, uh, in A. All my troubles seem so far away. I don't remember how it goes, but that's like if I was looking at that at, at yesterday, that's how I would think about that. Those those chords are, are really cool, 
But once again, this is um, did Paul Paul wrote this one, right? And it's got this great like movement where basically you're starting in one place, you're basically staying in this key, but you're taking this temporary vacation to the key of A minor, which also happens to be the relative minor of C major. Now, do you guys understand what relative major and minor scales are? Or is it like one of those things maybe we should talk about real quick? Um, a relative, basically when we talk about parallel scales like we did in the the mode with the chord borrowing page, those are all scales that start on the same root. Right? When we talk about relative scales, that means that we're talking about scales that have the same key uh, notes in them or the same key signature. So C major has all the same notes as A minor, right? A minor is the relative minor of C major, right? Um, my lessons and modes, I kind of talk about how we derive um, different sounds out of different scales. But like in C major, right? So that's very major sound. I'm just playing C major there. But if I wanted A minor, Right, because I'm actually paying attention to which notes I'm resolving on, and I'm using the chord tones of the, the chord or the, the tonality it's supposed to be. Uh, and that's basically how modes work, uh, is, is you're basically uh, shifting the center of gravity in any collection of, of notes and using that new center of gravity as the new key center, and you get all these different sounds out of it. Um, not really what this lesson's about, but it is important to understand that when I talk about a relative major or minor key that we are talking about all the chords are the same it's just that uh, the sun rises in the north instead of the east <laughs> you look at it that way okay so jeremy had this question here the transitional chords what's a good way to build those or find those i like the c major seven to c seven and you think i just answered the question so you're talking about like when we we're talking about the secondary dominance C major C7 are the is, is that is that I'm, I'm a little not sure yes no okay um, kind of getting towards the end but I was wondering if you guys had any other questions or um, even suggestions for what we could do in the future. Um, I'd like to do this every... Oh, looks like you say yes. Okay, uh, awesome. Um, let's not look at my belly. Um, I really, I, I'd love to do this every week on Wednesday. Uh, I think it'll be fun. The songwriting thing was just something different and fun to do. And I think understanding harmony not only for songwriting, but for learning songs and understanding the music you play is kind of important. You know, this is all the same stuff. Uh, but at the core of it, I teach guitar lessons. <laughs> so um, feel free if you want to in the comments here, uh, if you've got suggestions or requests for topics to cover, um, let me know and, and we can do that. Um, and just, you know, subscribe to the channel Please, if you're uh, if you're watching this, hit a thumbs up and subscribe and all that stuff. That helps me with the with the YouTube. <laughs> uh, we're trying to build our uh, uh, watch hours and all that other stuff here to to kind of build the channel. Um, also, Gary, thank you very much. Um, the PDF is um, is down there below too. Um, the nice thing is I've kind of gotten into the habit of all of my lessons generating these these PDFs that are kind of almost publishable. Um, partially because these are also classes I give my conservatory students uh, and I want to have good handouts for them but also it just makes sense to have everything kind of clean uh, in, a, in a way that you can print out and look at in front of you so cool um, if that is everything I'm gonna I'm gonna go have dinner I think there's meatloaf in the kitchen <laughs> which I'm very excited about the non-vegan dinner um, I also, um, the, the fun thing though also is because of the way I've got this set up, um, I've got my whole live rig is kind of sitting here so we can do stuff on gear, on pedals, guitars, um, 
you know, recording. I'm, I'm kind of wondering how I can manage doing the recording and doing the live streaming at the same time. Um, but I'm, I've got a lot of stuff that I'm kind of doing sitting here. This is in my, my garage studio. Um, so the list of topics are pretty wide open as long as they're guitar and music related. Um, that's pretty much it. All right, guys, I'm going to let you roll. I will see you. Thank you very much for hanging out. I appreciate it. Uh, thanks for the good questions, and I will see you next week.